Welcome to Black Box Mobile. As always, thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you like what you see, please hit that like button. And if you want to subscribe, please do that. Now, let's just move on to what we're going to talk about. How does the Pixel 4 XL look in 2021? Let's find out. When we first got our hands on the Pixel 4, which was very recently by the way, we were very excited to see how well the cameras work and how smooth the software ran slightly over a year later. Well, our first initial reaction was a little bit of a letdown. See, the Pixel 4 has a little bit of a love-hate relationship between design choices and new features such as the Soli radar chip. But one thing you don't hear too many people talk about is the certain issues that come along with the phone. That is until you check them out on Reddit. The first unit we tested, now to be fair, it was second hand, lasted us a day before we got the well Reddit known battery stuck on 50% issue. So what happens is the battery indicator doesn't show the phone charging or discharging. It just stays at 50%. Now the phone still functions, it's just you don't know how much juice you have to get you through to the end of the day. But, shortly after that, the phone couldn't hold a charge, even after charging it for hours. The battery would then always read 3 to 1% and then just shut down. So our initial review kind of halted there. Luckily, we contacted Google, and to our surprise, they just sent us a replacement. Yeah! And honestly, even though this may be a refurbished model, it looks brand new. So our guess is Google chooses to replace the screen, front and back, and the battery, making it look exactly like you're picking it up brand new. Firing this model up seemed to be running like brand new. Although when we did charge the phone up the first time up to 97% and then unplugged it, we noticed the indicator showed 100. So we did get a little bit worried. Now we reset the phone and the battery was back at 97%. So here's our guess on what could be happening. Since the Pixel uses a PD type charger, it may have issues running a typical fast charger or what we tried, the OnePlus Warp Charge. Long story short, especially if anyone has a Pixel 4, using a PD charger seems to have fixed things up. Now keep in mind, for the 50% issue, the reason why we had to send back the first model, Google did state to us that this was a hardware issue. Moving on, let's focus on the phone itself and the plenty of good that comes with it. So released in October 2019, our second Pixel 4 XL has actually been a good experience, starting with design. Our picture has that beautiful frosted white back with the nice aesthetic touch using orange for the power button, and if you hate fingerprints, on your phone, this will keep you happy. The black painted aluminum rails feel nice. The whole phone feels good in your hands. There is a slightly raised camera bump similar to the style of the iPhones. It looks decent because the camera module is black and then it works well with the white. Although one thing I do worry about is the square camera cutout. It can be easier to scratch because it's a wider uncovered surface area. The front, well, the front houses a 6.3 inch OLED flat screen panel, and although it's not as vibrant as Samsung, it's actually really pleasing to the eye. Mix that with 90 hertz screen refresher, and you have a screen that still fits in 2021. It could be a tad brighter though. Look up, and yes, you're not in 2020 anymore. You're more like in 2017-18 era. A huge bezel at the top, followed by slimmer ones along the side and the bottom. Now, yes, there were a lot of questions when this phone came out about why such a dated design choice. And at the time, even we were like typical Google, always showing up to the party with a dated dress code. But here's the thing. Almost every phone in 2019 and 2020 adopted the essential slash iPhone notch or hole punch cutout. So in 2021, the Pixel actually in some odd way feels refreshing. I don't mind the bezel. Anyone who follows this channel knows that hole punches and notches, they're just simply not our thing. Plus, the bezel was intended for useful features such as face unlock. You know, it has infrared cameras on it the front facing camera, an ambient light and proximity sensor, the audio speaker, a Soli radar chip, face unlock, dot projector, another face unlock IR camera, 
and another face unlock flood illuminator. The Pixel gives you a full screen without interruption. It's amazingly different again and for good reason. It's enjoyable to look at. So overall the package is nice. The size even for an XL doesn't feel too big, at least not for us. Let's talk sound. The Pixel is fitted with two stereo speakers. At first, the first unit we had had a crackle in the earpiece, but the replacements sound very loud and clear. These speakers are really good, while some say that they were the best of 2009 and 2020. We notice good clarity, a decent balance between the earpiece and the bottom speaker grill. There's good highs, and the bass is pretty punchy. To have a listen, you guys let us know what you think. And by the way, here's a little key point just to keep in mind, while this phone was initially released at such a high price when entering the market, a lot of people were disappointed with the hardware when compared to other flagship. But here's the thing, you're not just paying for hardware, you're paying for a software experience as well. So to prove my point, just look at the cameras. The tech is dated, like five years dated with small refinements. But the Pixel, even with its dated camera tech, can still pull in a better shot than other phones with the latest. Why? Because of the software. It's the effort that goes into processing a photo. So remember, just keep that in mind. Speaking of cameras, aside from the software, this is probably Google's biggest selling feature, and it's easy to see why. Initially, we didn't see what all the hype was about when comparing it to a few other competitors. For example, take a look at some shots compared to the LG G8, also released in the same year. We actually noticed more consistency in the G8. It managed to keep a steady color flow throughout most of its pics. While in high dynamic range, the Pixel kept changing its brightness and color temp. So if you are taking one of those kinds of hard shots, for example this one, notice a sign. The red, yellow, and green can be seen on the G8 while the Pixel only displayed the red and the yellow, leaving the green barely noticeable. Of course, you can brighten up the pick and all the data is there, but this is just a time where the G8 pulled ahead. However, look a little lower, and this is where we begin to see the real gem in the Pixel. It's the detail. The wood on the sign is so well detailed, while the G8 just has a little more softening going on. Sometimes we found the white balance was off under certain lighting, which is really odd given all the positive reviews and focus towards it. But then in really hard scenarios, it's like light years ahead of most flagships. So again, our initial impression just didn't really leave us too impressed. But as we kept shooting for the next few days, we saw what the Pixel had to offer all around. It's an excellent shooter, pretty much in almost every circumstance. It somehow shoots like a slightly darker brightness setting than like some other phones, but yet it manages to pull out like more detail in those darker areas. It's just really impressive. Like when photographing people with the Pixel, it can capture some real, almost DSLR type results. Also, the phone tends to stick to like a certain color temperature, you know, aside from that, those initial photos we had. Um, so for example, like iPhones are a little bit warm. The Huawei Mate 30 shows most photos with like a little coolness to it. And the Pixel can do everything in a single shot. It just somehow manages to neutralize the color in an image and make certain subjects pop within it. A fire hydrant will scream red in an image and a sky can sometimes have that nice enhanced blue all which gives more life to every photo, but somehow stays grounded at the same time. Again, it's just really super impressive. So when dealing with moving subjects, it's a bit of a hit or miss situation. Sometimes you're left with an unfocused shot and other times you have this surprisingly clear image. Now this is an issues with like every phone across the board, 
but using the Pixel does give you the most confidence out of all the phones tested. So it's not perfect, but it is the closest to it. The one thing the Pixel 4 XL is missing is a wide-angle lens. There were a few circumstances where we felt, you know, the wide-angle lens just would have helped. That's the biggest feature missing in the camera department. Uh, we are happy they did bring it to the Pixel 5. Now, portrait shots look amazing. And you can tell how confident Google is as they pretty much let you take a portrait of anything from anywhere for the most part. There are some clipping here and there, but it's noticeable when pixel peeping because of how aggressive portrait mode is, but overall it delivers one of the best experiences possible. Night mode works really well too. Pixel does an amazing job at absorbing light, resulting in great details and a bit of denoising too, which is always good. Now, there is some noise apparent, but that is the trade-off. Some manufacturers denoise so much that they lose a lot of detail. The Pixel has a healthy balance. So sometimes a little trick we did is use night mode during the day. That split second the shutter is open can make a big difference in your end result. We would use this if there was like insufficient light in an indoor setting. So to come out with the best photo, this was just the best option for us. Astrophotography mode is definitely fun and worth the experience too. It's simple, just keep the phone still facing the stars and night mode will just automatically switch to astro mode. And when it's ready, you hit that shutter button, and you just have to wait a few minutes, and the pixel can pull out, you know, incredible sky and stars, and it's just really impressive. Edit the photo a little more, and you can come out with some pretty incredible stuff. Now, there isn't too many video modes and options, and there's still no 60 frames per second in 4K. A little bit of a letdown, but uh, 1080 and 4K are very stable. It's one of the better phones out there to date. Sometimes the phone just automatically stops in frame and stays on a subject. It's almost unnatural, like you have it on a tripod or something, but still, the stabilization is just so accurate. We do notice a large crop in when you're going from photo to video mode. This could be the reason why we do see some noise in video, especially at like lower light. Um, the mics do sound pretty good, although you do get a little bit of that hiss in the background. Um, and then sometimes you do get like a boomy sound every now and again from surrounding noise. But overall, it's it's fairly good. So as far as software goes, there's really not much to complain about here. This is as stock as you can get for Android. Um, it's really smooth, everything works well, even with the 6 gigs of RAM that it only has. Nothing seems to slow this thing down at least not with what we tested. The one thing though I do notice is that Google kind of makes everything automatic, which is good for people who don't want to think, but if you want to customize your phone, I kind of feel like OnePlus's Oxygen OS might be a little bit more customizable and kind of offers the same kind of smoothness and play. But either way, if you ended up with, with Pixel or OnePlus for like as stock as possible, you really can't go wrong with either of these guys. Alright, so one really cool standout feature that I like with the Pixel is the recorder. What's really, really cool about this recorder is, you know, oh yeah, it records, sure, what doesn't record? But the fact that it has a live transcriber attached to it and they just both work simultaneously, so as you talk, well, I can, I can talk or I can just show you. So here's me recording some audio, I hope you can see it. flip it over to the transcriber and check it out. Now it's writing down everything I'm saying. On and on and on and on and over, up and down, left, right. It's pretty good at it with a few hiccups here and there, but for the most part, it's really accurate. Okay, we could talk about some of the other stuff that wasn't so popular, like the solely radar chip or gestures, that's what I meant to say. But the reality is we just didn't really use it that much. Now, that's not to say you shouldn't give a company credit where it's due. Remember, they're trying different things. So there's always a lot of black that go to like LG or even Samsung from a few years ago that tried to do their gesture stuff. Listen, this is some pretty heavy technology in here that could amount to something. But if it doesn't get popular, manufacturers drop it. So. Again, just maybe give a little bit of 
salute to something that is trying something different. It's a lot of something. Okay, let's wrap this up. Sometimes picking up a device from last year, even two years ago, has its benefits. Pixel can do unlimited storage at high quality, and that might be a Pixel exclusive soon. We don't know, but we'll see what happens. Um, in performance, you get pretty much the same type of performance you get in modern day flagships for most everyday use tasks, even at six gigs of RAM, but we'll see how this holds out in the future. The cameras are amazing, they push some really incredible results, and you can't get any more stock than Google for those who don't like bloatware. However, if you're looking for options, this might not be the best phone for you as it's limited to 64 or 128 gigs of storage with no slot for expansion. It doesn't have the brightest screen on the market, but it's still a beautiful one, and even though the battery life isn't the best, in our testing we averaged 6.5 hours of moderate use with screen on time. This phone is for you if you like being up to date through security and software, if you like the fluidity of the software, and love taking pictures to create some beautiful memories. And in 2021, we actually don't mind the design of the phone, especially the color arrangement with the white model. You can't forget that uninterrupted screen, even if the top bezel is a little heavy. In 2021, this still gets the job done. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you like what you see, again, subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.